So the topic of this video is kind of interesting, but it's because of a project I worked on at a local creator space. So I belong to this creator space and I got certified on their CNC machine. And to do that, we had to create a special project and then create that project on the CNC machine. So what I decided to do is to create like this little uh, maze project uh, on the CNC machine. Um, I designed it in Fusion and then had to create the tool paths and then cut it out on the CNC machine for the final project. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the tips and tricks that I use to create this, and hopefully that'll help you on some of your projects. So let's take a look. Okay, so let's start out by creating the overall shape of the maze. So I'm gonna start by creating a new component. We'll just call it maze and I'll create a sketch on my top plane. Now, one of the first tips I wanna share is I wanna create a center rectangle. Now, I could come up here to the Create menu, go to Rectangle, and then down here to Center Rectangle. Well, there's a cool command, and it's called the S key. If I just, in my viewport somewhere, hit the S key, you'll notice I have these sketch shortcuts, and the S stands for shortcut. And if I just start typing in, for example, like center, C-E-N, you'll notice it brings up all of the commands that have C-E-N in it, and there is center rectangle. If I click on it, it's actually gonna run the command right from there, okay? In fact, you'll notice, um, let me do the S key again, I even have it added to like this toolbar. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag that off so it's not in there, and I'll show you how I added that. So. So once again, I'm in my viewport. I hit the S key on my keyboard. I'll just do a quick search for CEN. There's my center rectangle. I want, I'm gonna use that command quite a bit. So I'll just hit this little up arrow and you'll notice it says add to shortcuts. And it just added it to the shortcut menu. And I can even drag and reorganize where I want that icon to be. I'll put it right there. And now if I were to click the S key, that shortcut command is right here on this main toolbar. So the S key is a very powerful command and it exists in all of your different workspaces. You know, the sketch workspace, the 3D modeling workspace, um, the uh, you know, machining, drawing, etc. workspaces. So I'm gonna go ahead and place my center rectangle right here. Uh, now I can go ahead and specify my dimensions. So I'm gonna say um, nine by 6.5 for my dimensions. And then I wanna create uh, a little shelf that the plexiglass is gonna sit in. So I'm gonna create a quick offset of 0.625 and I'll finish my sketch. I'll pre-select both of these sketches just by um, dragging from right to left and that's gonna cross over both of those profiles and you'll notice it selects both of those. And I can right mouse click and the command that makes sense is extrude. So I'll come in here and say minus 0.75 for the thickness. And I now have um, this block of wood. In fact, if I hit A on my keyboard, A is the shortcut for appearance. I can add this um, material here, this wooden material of 3D maple. I'll go ahead and expand open my, my maze component. I'll turn that sketch back on because I want to now create this recess for the piece of plexiglass that holds the ball into the maze. So I'm just gonna pre-select, hit extrude, and let's just go minus 0.0625 in this case. Okay, so now we have kind of the basic shape of our um, maze block, and now we wanna start creating the maze. Now, to save some time, I already created the sketch that kind of defines the shape of the maze, um, but all it is is just a sketch with some lines, you know, some straight lines on it. Now, there's probably multiple different ways you could create this maze, and you'll notice that I just did single lines, okay? Think about how much time it would take if we were to actually model the overall groove. So, you know, if I were to do the actual channels for all of these lines here, that would take a huge amount of time. 
Um, yes, I could do that and then extrude those profiles down, but that would take a, you know, a huge amount of time. So we're gonna use some tips and tricks and keep it simple. And so I'm just kind of drawing the overall path that I want the ball to be able to follow. So you might think, okay, let's use the web command, which really makes a lot of sense, right? It's designed to take a sketch profile and add some wall thickness to it. So if I say web, it's asking for a profile. So I'll just select this one, for example. But as I start to drag, you're gonna notice I get a message saying the curve you're selecting does not intersect a solid body. Well, I turned off the solid body. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on, but it doesn't matter. You'll notice I still get the same error message. Um, you know, can't be created, ensure that the profile can intersect the body, et cetera, et cetera. And the reason for that is it's because it's in this solid area. It needs to basically be in a hollow area and then it fills in the difference. And let me, let me show you what I mean by that. It's kind of confusing. So I'm gonna just create a really quick example here. Um, I'll just do a quick box like so. And then I'm gonna shell this out. So I'm gonna say shell, something like this. Again, I'm not worrying about dimensions or anything in this example, but I'll create a quick sketch um, and I can just draw you know, something like this. I'll come in here and use the web command. It's asking for the profile. And now when I start to drag, you'll notice that it's taking this profile and it's extruding it to the next extent which happens to be the floor of this box. Well, in our maze example, we have a solid shape. So there really isn't a floor for it to extrude to. And that's kind of the issue here. So I really can't use the web command. I would have to basically do a little bit of, you know, like, machining this out, maybe creating like a core, using that core to be able to create the, the web and then joining it back together, which yes, that would work, but that's a lot of extra work. So what I'm gonna do instead is to actually use some surfacing commands. So I'm gonna turn off the, the block of wood and under my surface tab, we can extrude individual lines. So for example, if I click on that and I start to drag, um, it says it's not visible. Let me go ahead and um, that's because, let me turn the bodies on. I'll turn that body off, there we go. Now I can see um, the, uh, the edge here. So it's basically extruding this edge. Um, let's go minus 0.375 in this case. And I'm just gonna come in here and select you know, all of these edges in here and you can kind of see how it's extruding all of these edges down like so. I'll say okay. And we've just basically extruded thin wall lines. Then I can come in here and use the thicken command. And what's cool about the thicken command, it's by default it's usually set to one side. So if I if I select um, you know this guy here, you'll see it's gonna expand or thicken to one side. But if I select this and say symmetric, hopefully you see the, the solution here, it's going to take that thin wall and give it some thickness. Now, I want these to be 0.3 inches in width, so I'm gonna type in 0.15. So it's gonna go 0.15 in one direction and 0.15 in the other for a total of 0.3. So now I can come in and just add in, you know, all of these um, other uh, extrusions. And so we get something that looks like this. And I'll say, okay. And it creates a new body right here, like so. If I turn the maze back on, the block, I should say, you can see we now have this gray body and we could come in and subtract that out. So my target's gonna be this wooden block. The tool is gonna to be that body that we just created. And instead of joining, we're gonna say cut. And you can now see what that looks like. It's gonna cut that out. 
Uh, we don't need to keep the tool in this case. I'll just go ahead and say OK. And we have now used basically those pencil lines and extruded them and then thickened them to create this particular shape. And what's really neat about this is if we turn the sketch back on, you could come in and make changes to the sketch. So for example, if I just drag that line up, you can see how it actually updates live, if it'll let me. Um, let me do, let me do like this line up here. We'll move that up and you can see how that updates. I could drag this back over here, et cetera, et cetera. So I could kind of tweak with what the design looks like um, to make it look a little bit different uh, if I, if I want to change what it looks like. Okay. So that's one of my tips that I wanted to share is kind of thinking outside the box. Instead of creating a very complex profile like you see here, think about how much time that would have taken in a sketch. Yes, I probably could have used you know, the offset command in my sketch, but I still would have had to close all of these um, you know, boxes, basically. I just kept the sketch really simple and used the uh, thicken command in surfacing. Okay, so then the next thing I wanted to show was I wanted to round over all of these edges. Um, so let me go ahead and I'll turn that body off there. Um, I want to round over all of these edges here. And you might think, okay, you could use the um, rule fillet. So under the fillet drop down, you see fillet and then we see rule fillet. Okay, and rule fillet's really powerful um, in certain situations. So what it basically allows you to do is to select features to fill it. So for example, I could select the, um, let's just do like this combine feature, and then let's just do maybe like 0.02, and you'll notice that it filleted all of, let's do maybe like 0.05, just so you can see a little bit better, 0.03, there we go it filleted all of the edges that had to do with that combine. But I don't want the top edges or the bottom edges. I only want like these vertical edges here. And you'll notice it says like rounds and fillets. So I could come in here and just say like rounds only. Well, that sort of did it, but it still um, does the top edges, but then it didn't do these here. So maybe it's fillets only. Okay, so that does those inside ones, but then it doesn't do the sharp corners and it does the bottom. So rule fillet doesn't actually solve my problem here. I wanna fillet all of the vertical edges, basically. So here's a cool little trick on doing that. If I came into fillet, I would have to select one by one. I'd have to go around and manually click all of these edges and that would take a huge amount of time. I could potentially mess up or miss one or something like that, okay? So what I'm gonna do instead is use a cool selection trick. So I'm gonna uh, come under my select menu and under selection filters, I'm gonna say, turn off select all and I'm gonna say body edges. Okay, and what that does is if I draw like a selection box, you'll notice that it doesn't select faces, it only selects edges, right? Whereas if I had it set to select all, it would have selected the faces and edges and bodies, etc. Okay, so under select, selection filters, I only have body edges. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at it through the, from the front plane and I'm gonna draw a crossing box all the way across this box here. And you can kind of see as I'm hovering, you can kind of see the edges being selected there. So I'm just gonna draw a box from right to left like so. And that's a crossing selection. So what it's gonna do is select any edges only that it's crossing over. And you can see how it selected all of those edges. Now, it didn't select these edges here or these edges here because I kind of 
made sure I stayed below that. I kind of just drew my window right up through here. Now I can come in and specify, you know, I want those to be 0.125 and it just rounded all of my edges to be 0.125. Now, when you're done with that, I highly recommend coming back to your selection filters, making sure that select all is turned on if you want to make sure you, know, you can select everything. Um, you know, I usually do the select edges and then once I'm done with that, I make sure everything's set back. So that way when I do a selection, I get everything I would expect. So just a little bit of a tip there. So that is how I went about creating this maze project. Uh, hopefully you learned some tips and different methodologies uh, such as you know using the surfacing command and the thicken command to quickly create the uh, the maze part and then also using the selection tool um, or the selection priority for the edges to quickly select all of the vertical edges instead of doing them manually i hope you learned something new in that video also I'm almost to 10,000 subscribers, so if you haven't subscribed yet, I ask that you hit like and subscribe and push me over that 10,000 mark. If you need help learning Fusion, make sure you visit my webpage at cadedllc.com. And as always, have fun learning Fusion.